Hi everyone, and for week 19 of my no buy year, I wanted to do a check-in about how my spring capsule wardrobe did not change my life. Now, obviously that's a little bit of a clickbait title. Sorry about that, everyone. Obviously a capsule wardrobe is probably not gonna be something that's life-changing. I'm just kind of poking fun at the influencers and the YouTube culture out there that's all about a grandiose claim in the title and kind of, you know, scandalizing the viewers. This changed my life. I'll never go back, all these things. Okay, <laughs> now that I've got that out of the way. So my capsule wardrobe, I, I was doing this for the first time this spring, right? So I'd never done one before. I had been very reluctant to even try it before just because there were things that I didn't, I didn't like the idea of restricting my wardrobe and not having everything available, um, kind of limiting layering possibilities. And if I didn't see all of my clothes, would I really feel the weight of all that I had? And you know, more things like that. But long story short is because it was my first capsule wardrobe, I think there are many mistakes that I made in the setup of the capsule. But I'm gonna talk through the pros and cons and what my experience was and whether or not I'm gonna try this again. So <laughs> stay tuned to the end if you wanna find out that information in the conclusion. But to get right into it, I chose about 40 pieces from my spring capsule wardrobe and I didn't actually end up using a lot of them. And to be honest, I also kind of stopped keeping track of the actual outfits after about three or three and a half weeks into this capsule. So I don't have a ton of information to share, but I do have some personal experience to share. The other variable for this capsule iteration is that while I'm on a no buy year, I was intending to not buy any new clothes. But for those of you who have seen some of my previous videos, you will know that I did buy clothes. Exhibit A is the, the sweatshirt that I'm wearing. And I do love this actually. It's proven to be a very wise for me purchase as far as how much I've been able to wear it and how much I love it when I do wear it and how, how it makes me feel. So at least that's a pro for <laughs> an item that was breaking the rules of my no buy. Uh, no more of that though. So I will not be buying clothes during the rest of the year. So if I do try any more capsule wardrobe or wardrobe challenges, the variable of adding new clothes, which I then want to wear right away, uh, will not be there. The first few things I'm going to talk about are, I guess you could call it the list of pros for having a spring capsule. So the restriction of the pieces in my wardrobe made me confront some of the items that I felt forced to wear instead of excited to wear. For example, this included that leather vest and I, I will bravely insert some b-roll of me wearing it <laughs> on that side of the screen. Um, I just discovered that this was not right for any of my needs in a vest. So I like the idea of the vest, but this one was too short, too fitted, and just not the right fit. I got this second hand and I will be relisting it second hand. Another example of something I thought I liked, but actually when I was wearing it more often in a shorter period of time, I found aspects of it annoying, and those are these leather pants. Now, I should have known better about leather pants because I actually had a pair of them before while I was a teacher, and I decluttered those already. And then I rebought them, not the exact same pair. These are the Aritzia Molinas, and I thought, oh, I'll get the it pair that everybody's raving about. Maybe that'll solve what I didn't like about the other ones, which were just a paper bag waist pair from Express. And I wore these. And probably about the third time that I wore them in the, in the space of about two weeks or three weeks, I just kind of felt the annoyance of, I mean, basically faux leather pants are plastic, right? So I was kind of feeling the annoyance of the texture, the plastic, and how it's like kind of, I don't know, it's not soft and cozy. And they're a little bit more stiff and they're a little bit cropped on me too, these pants. And I found that I highly prefer the full length or extra full length look on me and feel on me, even though these are the long length. They just don't fit how I want them to. And they're just a little bit plasticky and stiff. So again, no shade to anybody who likes these pants. They're objectively fine. They're just not in line with the values I like in my own clothes and my own wardrobe. So these will actually be decluttered 
again. So I will be decluttering black leather, faux leather pants one more time. The next thing I found myself putting in this capsule to challenge myself and discovering that I really didn't care to be challenged in that way was this denim maxi skirt. And I've talked about this before. I wore it in my duping the vibes of the Tibby Sid jeans. I was trying to see if this trend would work for me after I was seeing it so often and getting more and more intrigued and kind of liking the idea of it. But in practice, this just did not work for me. So it's from Reformation. It's got a slit in the back. I got it on sale uh, and I never took the tags off because I just, I guess I already knew in my heart that it wasn't going to be for me or that there was a high likelihood that it wouldn't work out. And again, you can kind of see that the shape just never really gave me the right vibes. And I guess I could just never break away from the connotations of the long denim maxi, especially without the slit in the front. I have a black long denim maxi that I like a lot better and I will continue to try to style that one. But this one is just gonna end up relisted on probably Mercari. And the last item is this beautiful jacket. And I am conflicted about this because <sighs> here's the thing. If I had never bought this and I didn't own it, I would not buy it again. And the things that are not ideal about it are the color. It is a very warm brown. However, I could make the argument that because it's a very warm brown and I don't have anything else like this, maybe I should keep it in case there's a day that I wanna feel warm. Normally I gravitate towards neutrals and cools and just the tone of this brown it's not that I don't like brown, it's just that the tone is very warm. And the suede, while it's so beautiful, is a little higher maintenance than I like in my fabrics these days. You can't really spill on it, you can't get it wet. It's also not super cozy. So again, like the faux leather pants, there's no cotton liner or anything in here that makes it cuddly. And I guess I value being cozy in my clothes more than I thought, which again, which is why the sweatshirt is a fantastic purchase for me because it is so cozy and it's actually softer than most sweatshirts that I own. But yeah, this is not cozy. It's so beautiful though. Uh, I did have to force myself to wear it every time, but I didn't, I wasn't mad at the results like I was with the other three items. So I think this is gonna be a, a hold for further review item. Uh, I might try to keep it for fall season just because fall is like, you know, the warm autumn vibes. Maybe I'll have more occasion to try to branch out of my comfort zone a little bit and see. Um, if I don't wear it and style it though this coming fall, it might have to go. It might have to go to somebody who will love it and give it the wear it deserves. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm decluttering slowly and mindfully this year because I've realized that the epidemic of decluttering and wardrobe purging and all that is such a problem. And it's not necessarily that de declutter is a problem in itself, but it's a symptom of a bigger problem of overconsumption. And I'm gonna make a dedicated video on that. But the point is, when I do this declutter this year, I kind of want it to be the last time, the final declutter, if you will. And I'm gearing up to doing some videos where I try on everything in my wardrobe hopefully in the next week or two. I know this is gonna be a marathon of filming for me to be able to put that out. So I'm, I'm trying, I'm gonna try, but I'm gonna to try to be really conscious and evaluate everything carefully so that if I do a big wardrobe declutter, that this is really truly the last one and I never accumulate enough new stuff to justify doing that again. Okay, so after that brief tangent, so the pros was basically having to wear my clothes more often in a shorter time period and therefore discovering when I wasn't excited to wear something or some annoying aspects about some pieces that led me to then declutter them. I didn't necessarily experience less decision fatigue because I actually really enjoy putting together my outfits. And I think one of the aspects of that for me is that I don't actually work outside the home every day. So on average, it might be a few times a week, maybe three times average per week. There, there will be weeks that I go out every day and there'll be weeks that I go out once or twice. So as somebody who's not going out to work five days a week, every week, maybe that's why I don't experience the fatigue that people talk about when they talk about the capsule wardrobe helping with that. Um, I guess that might not have been something I was struggling with before. I guess I didn't really 
do a capsule wardrobe for those reasons necessarily, but it was interesting to see what benefits I got out of it versus what people say they get out of it and didn't necessarily apply to my wardrobe life and my everyday needs. So one last pro before I go on to the cons is that I experienced a refinement of my preferences getting dressed. So I, I guess you could say I got some clarity in my personal style and I learned what I don't feel good in based on the restrictions I placed on this wardrobe. So because I was missing a couple of pieces, I initially, when I wasn't grabbing so much outside of the capsule, would stick to what I had available and would sometimes make an outfit that didn't feel quite right. So in particular, and this is kind of going to move into the list of cons as well, there was one day that I wore an outfit that felt extremely masculine. So the outfit consisted of this t-shirt with cars on it. So there's cars on the back of the shirt. I paired it with my black jeans which I highly prefer over the leather pants. I think these were not initially in the spring capsule, but I swapped these for the leather pants once I realized I didn't want to wear those anymore. And just with Adidas Gazelle sneakers. So as you can kind of tell by the pieces, and I'll put on the outfit and hopefully show you here, this was, uh, I guess you could say it's androgynous, but also kind of maybe leaning masculine with the cars on the shirt, just because of gender stereotyping. But um, when I wore this out, even with my hair down, which is maybe more of a feminine trait, and, you know, I did have some makeup on, I wasn't completely bare-faced, which is more, again, if I was doing a more completely androgynous look, maybe I wouldn't have, have makeup. But um, I just felt off. I felt like the outfit was overly masculine. And I found myself wishing that I had worn a skirt instead of the jeans, which was not in my capsule. Actually, I did have the long denim skirts in my capsule, but for whatever reason, those are not my go-to picks yet because I'm not super comfortable with gravitating towards those. And I think the black one, I was going to work and the black one has a slit that goes high enough that I have to drape something over my knees when I'm playing, sitting in the chair. So I just didn't want to deal with that either. I basically, long story short, I found myself shopping on this day, browsing, I didn't buy anything. But the day that I wore this outfit, and this is where it leads to the cons, is that the capsule wardrobe sometimes made me want to shop because of what I felt like I was missing. So on this day, I was wearing this outfit and felt the urge to look at white maxi skirts. It didn't help that all the spring trend articles on my Google feed were talking about the skirts for spring and um, showing me pictures of nice white maxi skirts in particular in nice crisp fabrics like linen and cotton and you know, high quality examples of this. And I actually momentarily forgot that I already had a white skirt. It wasn't a maxi, but it is kind of like a long midi. Here it is. It's like a crinkle material. And I thrifted that skirt. I think it was around $10. And I just never got the chance to, to wear it before I lost the season, I guess, that got cold. I never got the chance to wear that, so it didn't really feel like a part of my wardrobe, and I didn't really consider it for my spring capsule. And I was shopping for a white skirt on the day that I wore this outfit because of the restrictions of my capsule and having the wrong feeling in my clothes. Needless to say, I didn't buy a white skirt. It did end up on my April wish list, so you might have seen that already. But I now am wearing the white skirt that I have. So just swapping the jeans for the skirt makes the outfit feel a lot more balanced, at least for me and my tastes. In general, I didn't love the restriction of clothing and I did find myself reaching for pieces outside of my capsule. Now, again, this might have been a me problem because like I said, I didn't wear everything in my capsule. So namely, I didn't wear all the tops that I included. I had way more tops than I needed and I found myself swapping the bottoms, like I said already, I swapped the leather pants for the jeans. I wanted that skirt in my capsule, the white skirt. I wanted to wear the gray version of my trousers, things like that. And perhaps I just misbalanced the things that I tended to wear, maybe especially because I don't work a five day week every week. When you work more days consecutively, the more tops you have, the more options you have, right? Because you can wear the same pair of pants with a different top more easily than wearing the same top with different bottoms. I think for various reasons. I think people tend to notice your shirts more, especially if they have a graphic. And I think also your shirts tend to need washing more often just because of the sweat and, you know, practical reasons. So if you 
work more often outside of the home on consecutive days, it's better to have more top options, in my opinion, that you can cycle through with the same bottoms. But in my case, where I only have maybe one week every six weeks that I'm out every day, and then the other weeks are like three or four times here and there, not consecutive days, and also about half of those days, maybe a third of those days, I'm already in concert black because it's a rehearsal and a show on the same day. So some of those days, I'm not even wearing the clothes out of my capsule at all because I'm already in my workwear. When I don't have as many work days to choose from my capsule, maybe I didn't need so many tops and maybe I should have had more bottoms instead of tops. And another point kind of in that same vein is that my life reality, my needs for getting dressed was not necessarily adequately reflected in my capsule because I chose 40 pieces, which is kind of a large capsule. And I focused on workwear for this. I didn't do a separate capsule of homeware or activewear. I don't really think I need an activewear capsule because it's not like I'm overflowing with workout wear, but um, I didn't have a homeware capsule. And I do spend the majority of my days at home. So either taking care of kids or doing some work from home and whatever I'm doing at home, either way, I'm in clothes that weren't in my 40 piece capsule because those are my nicer clothes. And I purposely don't wear most of those at home because I don't want to get them stained or dirty or have to wash them so much because they're more delicate fabrics and I don't want to strain the fibers through wearing them more and therefore needing to wash them more. So something about the misrepresentation of the number of pieces plus the number of days that I needed to go to that capsule just didn't feel quite right either. So I'm, I'm curious about this and if you have any ideas, is there a way that you think I could represent my homeware, athletic wear, and work wear in the same capsule? Do I need different capsules, maybe mini capsules? Should I have a smaller work wear capsule? I'm so curious as to what your ideas might be to help help me find a workable system. Like I said, work is also concert black, maybe 30% of the time. Do I need a concert black capsule? So I don't think I need a concert black capsule to answer my own question there because I don't feel like I'm overflowing with options of concert black that need to be restricted. I do probably need to go through my concert black to make sure everything is still a valid option but I don't think I need to have a separate capsule or include that in a mini capsule. But I am curious about opinions on everything else. So the athletic wear, work wear, home wear kind of trichotomies that I have. <laughs> Dichotomy, trichotomy, does that work? And if you have any ideas, please comment below. Okay, so in conclusion, will I try this again? I think the answer is yes. I think I will do a summer capsule and some of my variables might be solved in themselves because over the summer, I have much, much less work outside the home. The symphony doesn't operate in the summer months. And while I have some smaller chamber music engagements, those are gonna be done in early June. And then there's the first week or so of July, I'll have some work as well. But other than that, I will have no official work. So my summer capsule will be on the whole much more casual with much fewer work appropriate pieces, or at least pieces that I will not also be wearing at home. So I might have homeware that's also work appropriate, but it won't be like my spring capsule where most of the 40 pieces I would prefer not to wear at home because I didn't want to get them dirty. I'm wondering if the summer capsule will therefore be smaller, but I haven't set that up yet. So you can wait and see, subscribe if you want to see that, if you want to get notified of when my summer capsule is posted and what that might look like. So I think most of the, the cons or the issues I had with this spring capsule were me problems and not problems to deal with capsule wardrobing in general. So the choosing the wrong pieces, maybe having too many pieces, having the wrong balance of clothes for my needs in actual life, workwear versus homeware, and then bringing in new pieces that I then wanted to wear right away and kind of added to my capsule unintentionally. Um, incidentally, I do really love this sweatshirt, like I've said, and then the jeans that I got have also become wardrobe MVPs already. So again, here's what they look like on my body and one of my favorite outfits <laughs> wearing them, again, included that sweatshirt that was not in my capsule, but I wore in my first capsule outfits installment, despite it not being in there, the La Mer with the wave on it. I love this kind of monochromatic look with the dark jeans, the dark sweatshirts with a wave and I tended to wear a white tee underneath for the peak of color there and just Birkenstocks and I, I loved how this felt 
it felt right to go to work in this, even though it's basically the sweatshirt and jeans. I kind of talked about that in the video where I failed and bought these items, is that many people around me wear essentially some combination of a hoodie and jeans, but having it kind of elevated or unique in this way helps me feel like myself, but also fit in. And feeling like I fit in is also important to me. If you've seen my life story, you'll know that as well. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of backstory for everything that I say about my wardrobe, as it turns out. Anyway, because it was my first capsule, I think a lot of the issues were my mistakes. And I'll remove the variables of any new clothes coming in, and I do hope to continue to use this strategy to find out what I don't like to wear as much. And it becomes clearer when I do restrict to a capsule, which I did really appreciate. So I hope to continue decluttering mindfully in this way, gathering information about my wardrobe, I think I'll be happier when I reach a lower complete number of pieces. And again, this might become more clear after you see my entire wardrobe try on, which like I said, is not posted yet, but will hopefully be posted in the next few weeks. And you'll be able to see what I mean when I say I have too many clothes and how I think I'll be happier with less. So if you enjoyed this reflection of my very first capsule wardrobe that I made for spring, Feel free to stick around. I love to have others along on this journey. And I'm, I'm really loving exploring what it might be like to, I don't wanna say be a fashion influencer because I'm no fashion expert. I'm not gonna be prescribing what you should be doing, at least certainly not until I feel more confident myself. But um, if it's possible to make fashion content, let's say, without buying any new fashion, even thrifting, um, I love the thrift creators, but they do seem to bring in new pieces fairly often. And I'm very curious as to what it might look like to do more fashion content, essentially never buying new clothes. I know for this past season, I bought some new clothes. So I will be going forward exploring the ideas of making more outfits and experimenting with my wardrobe, bringing in absolutely nothing new. And I wanna see if there's maybe a future for more of that. If you like seeing outfits and fashion content, let me know, comment, give it a like or whatever. I know I like to watch that content a lot myself. And actually after doing my spring capsule wardrobe outfits video, I learned a few things by watching myself in, in the clothes I was choosing and maybe got some tips on things that I like and dislike too. So it's helping me improve my own style, which I think is a common thing that fashion influencers who kind of care more about sharing their style and sharing style tips will say is that it helps them with their own style to document their own outfits. So I might just do it here and there for me again um, so I can keep on learning about myself and my style and feel even better about not buying things by paring down my closet into just the A-list clothes that make me feel great and reflect what I think is my personal style. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up here or I could talk about clothes all day. <laughs> um, I will see you in the next one. <laughs> I'm gonna mentally gear up to try and start the declutter slash trying on everything in my wardrobe process. Future spoiler alert, it will involve taking everything out of my wardrobe and piling it up on the floor. So there's gonna be a mountain of clothes and my husband's probably gonna hate me for cluttering up our bedroom until I get the process done. I, I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye for now. When I sit down in pants that are like, okay while I'm standing. They ride up like halfway up my calf and expose the socks and the shoes and whatever I might have under there. Um, it's really just socks and shoes. I'm not hiding anything. Do not buy them again, Alexa. Do not buy them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself at the beginning of this video. My name is Alexa and I am telling myself not to buy these pants ever again. Twice decluttered. <laughs>